Here we go. Oh, it floats. No, it doesn't. Hey guys, welcome back to the second channel where we are taking a look at this ArcPax solar generator or backup battery. Now, this is a little different than any I've seen before because they claim this to be IPX67 waterproof. So you can like hose it down or even dunk it in water uh, for a short period of time, we'd say. So we're gonna put that to the test today and that'll be the main purpose of this video. Let's touch on a few of the specs. It's a 1500 watt hour battery in it with 1800 watts running or 3300 watt peak power or like starting current. It weighs 48 and a half pounds and they advertise a roughly two hour recharge time on it. Uh, one of the features I like is these little uh, uh, pins up top for tying it down for one, or if you wanna you know, throw this big guy on and throw it over your shoulder to carry it, very easy. But you also have the two smaller handles you can clip on. These pins seem like they're integrated to the frame, very structurally sound, and you just have a lot of options with that style. I uh, charged this a week or so ago and used it a couple times, but to power it on, you simply press that once and you'll see the screen fire up. That little flicker, that's just the camera doing it. Uh, it's at 88% right now. Now you have a light, pretty standard on most of these battery banks. Again, that's not flashing either. That's one setting. There's bright and off. And you have DC 12 volts. You have two USBs and rated at 22.5 watts each. And then USB-Cs rated at 36 watts. You have four of those. And this does have a cover that goes over top, but it doesn't seem like it would prevent water uh, from going inside there. It's just kind of like to prevent splashes from going in because they don't actually stick into the ports. Over on the back side, you have four AC outs. Again, with a rubber cover to prevent splashes. And this is your button to turn that on. When on, it shows your wattage out and then how many hours are expected. It just kind of fluctuates between those two screens. To turn it off, same deal, single press. Then you have a solar charge port, has a built-in solar charge controller in it, overload protection, and this is to charge it up, comes with the power cable. I like that the charging brick is built in. Sometimes they give you a big extra brick with these you gotta carry and that's kind of a nuisance. And I want to correct myself, these are not all 36 watts. I'm not sure if that last one's 100 watts or 45 watts, but you can make, make of that what you'd like. There's no switch to turn any of the outlets on on the front. You just simply make sure the machine's on, plug it in, and then there goes my phone charging. It's showing, it's pulling nine watts. Now let's quickly try out the AC output. I got this DeWalt drill. Fires up no problem, and that's only pulling 250 watts. I'd like to check the circuit protection. Again, this is rated for up to 1800 watts. So should be able to run this heat gun. Actually, it should be able to go on high. And we are 1445 watts. Let that run for a little bit. All right, drill up too. Well, it's holding around 1680 watts, no problem. Let's fire the toaster up now. What do we got? We're at... Uh, 2200 that should pop because we're over the 1800 it's trying to run it but for how long i guess we'll see 2200 watts output right now showing 0.5 hours runtime so this thing packs a punch uh, of course if you're using you know cutting a piece of wood with a, a saw you're going to get really high wattage spikes but yeah it's, it's just holding that 2200 there it goes okay uh, it popped, which is a good thing because that means uh, the circuit protection functions. And to reset it, all I did was press the button on the back and that was able to reset it. Time to go do some real testing. If you want to see more on the electrical output and how much life is in this battery, there's another video I was checking out. I'll drop it down below. He did a great job testing all that. I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of these straps. I mean, look how stylish this is. I got my waterproof Jeep, my waterproof solar generator. Ready to go hit the river. It, it really is like, this is just a great idea. I mean, you could add a little bit more uh, padding up top, but a little weird to get off of there. Uh, what's cool is these straps are adjustable too, this rope. Somebody put a, a slipper on there. I mean, look at that. Very cool. And it is supposed to rain today, but wouldn't this be the, the perfect 
battery to bring with you if you're riding in a Jeep with no top or parking brake for that matter. Ah yes, left my parking brake over there. Oh yes, I know just the place to try out the waterproof ability of this machine. Not gonna be doing a bathtub, you know, we're going into dirty Delaware. Do it proper, I mean, because if I ever drop this thing in the water, it's not gonna be in a bathtub. Oh look at that, somebody came down and either, oh, stalled out, they either cleaned up or somebody dumped trash here. I don't know, it seems like, seems like maybe somebody's dumped it. Oh no, we're rolling into the river. Oh, let's bump start it. Oh, that's wrong gear. Oh, come on. Second. Come on. Well, if the Jeep happened to roll into the river right now, if, you know, somebody kicked my block out and I didn't have it in first gear, well, I wouldn't be too worried, because you guys remember the Tundra submarine? I mean, sunk her 12 feet deep, came out, had to run in the next day, even pulling the boat trailer. That was a fun video, not, not so much. Uh, my biggest worry here would be the expensive solar generator battery, because you guys know these are not cheap. So let's dunk it in the river. All of the suspense. Oh, here we go. Let's do it. There we go. It's in the river. Will it survive the test? No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna we're gonna walk out. Unfortunately, it's uh, we're about mid tide, low tide, so I'm gonna have to walk in pretty deep because this is not a very steep ledge. But that's okay. I came prepared. Uh, we are gonna turn this on, which by the way, it did power itself off. I heard it beep. No so single press, and you know, 84 uh, percent. I guess we'll turn the light on, and we'll also. Uh, this is advertised to be safe like so if you're powering a toaster and you dunk this thing in the water it's not gonna electrocute anyone it's autonomously going to shut down turn on these guys open a couple up because that's not keeping it waterproof anyway uh, and then it's gonna dry itself off apparently so yeah, lights on power's on not gonna get electrocuted because there's so much water here even if it did keep power and it would just you know dissipate and accidents usually happen something like this there we go oh it floats no it doesn't lights still on wow this feels so weird i bet you people are looking at me like what the heck is this guy doing they even got cameras under this bridge um the light is still on i'm gonna let it go for about oh i don't know 30 seconds you know go full saturation still see some bubbles coming out I'm not being electrocuted, so no problems there. So 20 seconds later, I can see the screen has thrown some kind of code, but the light's still on. It's just detected the water, and we'll yank it out of here in a second. All right, that's been over a minute. Ooh, look at that. Oh no. See all that air just plunge out? That could mean that water has entered somewhere it's not supposed to. I don't like the sign of those bubbles. That, to me, tell, that tells me a gasket may have broken. Let's pull it out. So sorry to do this to you, little machine. All right, this is a light survived. Not too shocking. But you see it shows a little water droplet there and the screen's kind of going wheat, 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 wheat. It just shut off actually is what it did. Now we're going to turn you back on. Um, okay, through that code again. In case I didn't say it before, this is not advertised to work underwater. It's just designed to be able to go underwater and then dry itself off and be used again in the future without any damage. This shut off when we came down it's because this hill right here i recently adjusted the float height and it's it's up too high so it uh, flooded itself well, we're back home and i just dried this off with a towel and then hit all the ports with an air blower and then actually a hair dryer too just to be safe so let's try powering this up again uh, to get into drying mode once you turn it on you single press both of these buttons and then it should kick the fans on. You see it show, still showing the water droplet. Oh, there they go. 
Yeah. Little fans blowing out, sucking in on this side, and I would presume on the bottom too. Yep, I can hear that. I don't know how long it takes. I would imagine until it's just fully dry. It's a pretty humid day too with the, the weather. All right, I'm out here a couple hours later and I see the machine has shut itself off. So let's try powering it up. And we're not showing the water symbol anymore. All right, well, let's first try out the USB. See if that works. And yupper, that's a-okay. And let's turn the outlets on. Got the beep. I got this little compressor. Let's try to kick it. Boom. Oh, it has survived a submersion. One minute, Delaware River. Seems like a pretty good unit. Uh, time will really tell. I suppose the next thing I could do is take it all apart and see if any water actually got inside. Uh, but I, I was looking at the other video and it seems that those components are all completely sealed off. So I, I don't want to break the glue bond. I guess I'll just see how it holds up in the future. So if you guys are interested in something like this, I will drop a link to more information down below. I didn't try out all the features, like for instance, the solar charger, but this was just a little intro and water test on it, so I will chime in in the future maybe. We'll see how it holds up after that uh, dunk in the river. As of right now, this unit definitely gets a giant thumbs up. Appreciate you guys tuning into the video. Hopefully you thought that was interesting. I know I did, and uh, hope to see you in another one very soon. No nonsense, no how-to, over out. <laughs>